Um, having been through the ups and downs of the market and prices of groceries, gasoline, all of that, I can say to you that the market is manipulated uh, slightly. Use the word inflation to be somewhat politically inflammatory. We have gone through, in my several decades of time on this planet, inflationary times and one of the things I've found that is very true is during inflation times when food prices go up and household items that we need go up in price, they usually don't come down. Grocery prices, probably the single most difficult thing for people to handle in the inflation times. We understand housing, but uh, groceries have gone sky high. There are honestly people who can only buy the necessities, even though they're making decent money because groceries are out of control. And so the other thing that I've noticed is that food prices in general, fast food restaurants, everywhere, the cost of eating has skyrocketed. So that's no joke. And for everybody who's lived through it as many times as I have, the prices really don't go down. So I would say the number one problem is groceries and then secondarily housing, and that's no joke. As the housing market goes down because interest rates go up, rental prices go up because a lot of people who cannot buy a house due to the interest rate say, I can't buy a house, so I'm going to have to rent. So the renter's market ends up getting gouged and they end up going, rents go too high and ace people out of their own apartments. Gasoline is manipulated. Gas could go down to $2 a gallon tomorrow and the oil companies would make a lot of money. Gas prices and oil prices, those are manipulated heavily as part of the inflationary process. I think that food and housing are the two main things. What can you do about food? You know what? Eat at home, make your own meals buy a lot of chicken, cook it up, have chicken with potato, have chicken with corn, have chicken on salad, buy at the grocery store the things that will last the longest and cook them at home and proportion out the food is the only way to battle it. If you think that you can eat the same as you did four years ago or five years ago, you cannot. The price of food is enormous. And when I go to the store, sometimes I just put things back down. And it's not that I couldn't afford it if I, if I really wanted it, but I, I really feel that we've been really screwed over by food prices. And I know one of the problems is getting the food to the places it needs to be, the cost of growing, the cost of labor to farm it, uh, the cost of equipment and machinery and the gasoline and all the things that go into food prices, um, importing it and exporting it and where we get it from. There are so many factors in the economics of food that it would be impossible to go into all of it right now. But the truth is that the food prices go up and up and up and really don't come down. And I think food and housing are the two biggest inflation problems. And I think that they're problems. I don't think that they're going to go away. I think the housing market is really volatile. And I'll explain again about interest rates. When we have extremely low interest rates in this country for mortgages and people do interest only loans at 2.25% for seven years and do that kind of thing and we sign up all these people for that kind of interest rate, when the banks are not making money on the interest rate or people cannot save money because they get 0.003% on the money they're trying to save. There has to be a checks and balances. So they raise the interest rate, then that raises the savings rate, you know, the CD rates and everything, and things start to go up. A 7% mortgage interest rate, that is not anywhere near as high as it's been in the past. I know I've said on another broadcast that my interest rate was 16.5% on the second house I bought in the 80s during the Reagan years. And my first house um, I got with a VA loan through my husband and it never was more or less than 6%. So people are complaining now, but you know, in the past 2.25% interest rate fixed for seven years was unheard of. But now they've allowed that for the last seven or eight years. So now they have to make a correction and who suffers from that? All of us. 
the housing market, the price of houses goes down a little bit, but your interest rate is high enough so your payment stays up there. You have property tax. And if you don't read the fine print in about three years, they're gonna add principal to your interest payment at a set amount. And you're gonna say, I can't afford this payment. So not only is the country making a lot of angst through the interest rate and the prices of rentals and the prices of housing, you know, the high foods and everything, people aren't reading the fine print. People aren't looking for the things that could harm them. They go, oh yeah, I, yay, I get to buy a house. No, can you afford this house in two years? Can you afford this house if the interest rate changes? All those things happen. But food and housing are the two that are, are really awful. And also I read a very in-depth article yesterday that the cost of cars are so high that a lot of people just can't buy new cars. They So that's what took off in the pandemic was the used car market. Uh, they couldn't get new cars in, so they jacked up the price of used cars. And so they blooded the market with used cars and were buying back people's leases and saying, we'll give you another deal if you'll just give us back that used car because we can sell it. So now new cars cost so much money that people aren't buying them. So probably after food and housing, cars. You know, for the average American, you know, there are a lot of people in big brackets everywhere that worry about inflation on other issues. But for the average person like us, uh, average people, it's groceries, housing, and cars, and the price of gasoline. But be aware, gasoline is highly manipulated. That one could change. That one's kind of a joke, but yeah. That's inflation. And I know they say they curb inflation by raising interest rates. And in our country, we have an inflation rate, what about five or 6% right now, maybe a little higher, but there are countries that their inflation rate is 14 and a half, 15%. And because inflation is so oddly calculated, people don't really understand, but it's really the, the price of everything going up and your salary staying the same or going down. And that's the basic thing is there's a too big a gap between the prices rising in those commodities and those things we need every day and where our salaries are. And then as salaries go up, corporations raise prices and CEOs want the same or better, you know, payout than they got the year before. So a lot of times in these corporations that don't really need to raise prices, they do because their higher ups want the money. A lot of it's greed, guys. You know, you can be corporate all you want, but a lot of it's just corporate greed. Can someone really, does someone really need a $59 million bonus every year? No, not really, but they like it. So you and I pay the price for that.